Okay, in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to look at Slide Masters. Now, before you use Slide Masters, you've got to have a reason for using it. And I've been producing PowerPoint presentations for years. And what I find is if your PowerPoint presentation itself contains a lot of slides, there's two things when I'm starting to produce a large presentation that worry me. One, do I have to keep making cosmetic changes to each slide as I introduce a new slide and keep adding them one by one? Cosmetic changes meaning backgrounds, my font sizes, the colors of my fonts, um, clip art, things like um, company logo, bottom right hand corner, page number, bottom left hand corner, copyright information, trademark patent information at the bottom, you might want a banner across the top, my email address for people who are watching the presentation, you might want to note that down. So every time I introduce a new slide, I might want to repeat or duplicate that information irrespective of what the body of the, of the PowerPoint slide is going to contain. So that's one thing, I want to make my life a lot easier. Uh, and that's what templates are for, ma master slides are for. And we'll look at how that works. The second thing is if I've got a lot of slides in my presentation, what tends to happen is I like to split it up into sections. So for example, if we're presenting about the company, the type of products we've got, what the benefits are, and how you can buy them. That's four sections. If it's going to last about an hour long, what I like to do is to change the color scheme of my collection of slides to do with the company and keep them as one color. When we start to talk about the products and the range of products I've got, change the theme a little bit, and then change the theme when we get to what the benefits are, and lastly change the theme again at the end on how to buy it, which stores you can get them from, and when's the day of the launch. So if we've got 20 slides in each section, that's four sections, 20 slides each, a PowerPoint presentation made up of 80 slides in total, and we want to make it a simple process of creating them, and we want to be able to group them together so we can change the cosmetics as we go along. That would have been a real pain in previous versions of, of, of Office. You could do some of those things, you couldn't do others, and the way you did them was a little bit harder. So if you look at my PowerPoint that I've got open at the moment, it's a single presentation made up of one slide. Um, and there's very little on there at the moment. If we know from the word go that we're going to be introducing at least 20 slides with certain things like logos and page numbers, what we ought to do is not get running into creating our PowerPoint presentation straight away. We need to prepare the masters first. And a master is a very different slide to normal slides. You don't actually present a master slide. It's a hidden slide well outside of the presentation. And you make the changes to the master slide. And the type of things you make, the, the type of changes you make are the ones that you want repeated throughout the rest of your presentation. What you're looking at on my screen is not the master slide. It's hidden, and certainly in 2007, to get to it is somewhere else. If I go and click up near the top here, which is the View tab, you'll see that the ribbon's changed as you'd expect it to. On the left-hand side, you'll see that there's an option called Slide Master. And if I choose the Slide Master option, and I zoom out, across the top, you'll see that there's a new program option that wasn't there before. So Slide Master. And lots of fun stuff you can do with it. As you can see from the ribbon, there's various options. Now, looking at that screen, it, you can get lost easily, especially if you've used previous versions of Microsoft Office. They didn't have that left-hand uh, left column. And people can sometimes wonder, hang on a second, Ishmael. You said that we're going to be working on one master slide, which who will then duplicate its feature set to the rest of my slides. Andy, what do you think, looking at the left-hand column, what do you think, which one of those slides on the left do you think is the master slide? The top one. Good. And what do you think all those other little ones underneath are? Your other slides. The slides in my presentation? Yeah. They're actually not, and that's, that's how it can get very confusing. You would normally have expected to see on previous versions of Office a single master slide where you make changes. That, in fact, is this slide here. And I'll zoom in, and it's this one. And we can go ahead and make changes to that straight away, and I'll start to do that now. And you'll see how that impacts the ones underneath. So you can see that my title master, my master slide, is made up of certain placeholders. So it's important to get your terminology right. We've got, we're looking at a master slide, which is made up of little placeholders. And placeholders are effectively this little box at the top, which is where my title goes, the box underneath it, which is where my bulleted text goes, another little box at the bottom here. If I zoom in, you'll see it's the date. Another box at the bottom here, which is a footer text, maybe copyright information. And another one down here, which has already got for us automatically a page number. Those are placeholders. So we can now modify these as you would normally. I don't want to spend a lot of time explaining how to, because you know how to do that already. So you could click on here, and for example, you could change the, the way that the font's going to appear by introducing bold, italics, changing the font type. And every time you create a new slide, you will find that that font style and the color scheme will follow. But the truth of the matter is that 
When you go to create a new slide in PowerPoint, you don't just want to bring colors and backgrounds with you. You actually want to introduce different layouts. Now, to remind you of what layouts were, is when you go to create a, a new slide in a PowerPoint presentation, it's not just blank, is it? Like this one. This one is a classic example of a layout that suggests it's going to be used to explain a title of a, of a slide and then give you some bulleted text. What if I wanted to show two pictures side by side? This is not the type of layout I would use. The type of layout I would probably use, looking at the screen here and scrolling down as we go, I'd probably want to use something like this one which is already got, and if I choose it, you'll see it. It's already got a title across the top, and it's got these two separate panes for us to introduce possibly two pictures, two documents, two, pa two, two alternative uh, videos to watch, so two separate objects. And that's a different layout. So, very quickly to recap, up at the top, you've got one master slide accompanied by, automatically by default in 2007, 11 layouts that come with it. Each of the layouts has got a multiple set of placeholders. Everyone follow? So effectively, if we make a change to the master slide at the top, those changes will then filter down to all the 11 layouts that are associated to that master slide. OK, let's do that now. I'm going to change on my master slide the background to be a gradient of blue. Notice it's made the change to the master slide and all the layouts that are associated with that master slide. If we just hold it there and close the master view, you'll see that we've now had a change to our initial slide that we got given by default in PowerPoint. If I attempt to go and introduce a new slide, you can see that they've automatically changed. And not just changed for one particular layout, changed for all of the layouts. OK? So it doesn't matter which one I choose. If you wanted one of your layouts to look slightly different within your master collection, that would be a subtle difference to the way that we go about it. So if I go back to view, we go back to slide master. You can see that I can not only go and make changes here, the problem with that is the changes will then filter all the way down. If I scroll down to just the one that I want to make the changes to, which is this one here, I can then go to background, change the background style to a gray, and you can see that that individual layout has maintained the gray. The rest of them are staying blue. Everyone clear? And the same will happen when you go into, to insert a slide. Problem is, the premise from which we started was one presentation, 80 slides, with four different schemes of colors. Do you follow? So the beginning of the first 20 slides will be one type, and then I'll have different layouts within my 20 slides. Some will have picture side by side, some will have video, and some will have titles. My next 20 slides will start with another title and then a different set of layouts as well, depending on what I'm presenting, and then again and again. But from the looks of things, there is only really one master with 11 different layouts. So what you can do here is you can either go to the master slide that you've got, and I'll zoom in while I do this, right-click and choose Duplicate Slide Master. And if you think about it for a second, what do you reckon that's going to do? It's going to take my master slide with the 11 layouts and then do what? stick another master slide at the bottom with another 11 layouts. Initially, they'll look exactly the same as these 11 and master, and then you can go and make changes. If you didn't want to do that, I'll zoom out. The alternative option is right up here, insert another slide master, which, if you hadn't seen the little session I've given you now, would have confused you even more. Having one slide master and then having another slide master, one how on earth do you choose between the two? So if I choose insert slide master without duplicating from what I've got, and zoom out, you'll see that right at the top you've got my blue master with the 11 little layouts underneath. And then you've got the default master slide again with 11 different layouts underneath. Everyone clear? And then you can make... So we're going to go to this one and choose the background. Choosing the background option to be background style of a very different color scheme. So format background color scheme, a gradient fill. And we're going to go for a preset color and something silly like this red. I can click close, and we're done. So we've got a, a series of blue up at the top and a series of red down the bottom.